Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor Anders Motz. Hello, hello. He's special. And yeah. Uber Master Instructor who's also relatively special, uh, Mr. Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we take you into the inner workings of Pro Tools and the ethos to help the user community better understand our favorite door. In this week's episode, we're looking at a question from Tokyo. Not the country, the person. Very cool name, by the way. It's not the country, it is a good by name. the way. It's, it's, it's a city, right? It, it is. Yes. <clears throat> the country of Sorry. Tokyo. Oh. Uh, so the question is, is there a nudge grid value I option in the MIDI editor? Oh, well, that's a bit to unpack here. Um, I can do this in every other door, but I haven't had, I haven't been able to figure out how to do it in Pro Tools yet. Uh, that way, whatever the grid subdivision is, that's how far the nudge will travel. Now, the, the question makes it sound like nudging in Pro Tools isn't particularly great, but the reality is we're actually quite flexible in Pro Tools. It can do quite a lot, right, Anders? Yeah, uh, totally. There are so many uh, versions of nudging, not, not just nudging uh, clips or individual notes in the MIDI editor. Uh, but let's take a look a little bit at the controls. And uh, just off camera, we were discussing, like, like, what is the question about actually? And... Uh, and let's take a look inside the MIDI editor. So I'm pressing Control equals on the Mac uh, to open the MIDI editor, or that will be the Start key and equals on a PC. And up in the toolbar, I've got separate values for grid and nudge. Right now, I've set these to follow the main time scale, meaning whatever time scale I have as my main counter will be inherited by the grid and also by the nudge value. And this is something that I like. So when if I, if I change the main time scale to minutes and seconds, I'm nudging or, uh, and my grid, it might be in seconds instead of, of quarter notes and so on. And um, I'm a bit unsure if, if Tokyo wants these grid and nudge values to be the same always. And there's unfortunately no way to do that in Pro Tools. You can't change the grid and have the nudge value change in the same, in the same way. But um, there are a couple of shortcuts that might be really, really useful for you. So one that I keep using a lot is the option command plus minus, which will which will uh, increase and decrease the nudge value. And if you want to do the same with your grid value, it's control option plus minus that does this exact same thing. So, um, so once again, option command plus minus, or that would be alt control plus minus on a PC, uh, will increase and decrease the nudge value, whereas control option on a Mac or the start Alt keys plus minus on a PC will increase and decrease the, the grid value. Andy. Right. So so there's no way the answer to his question, can you do that in Pro Tools, is no. Right. But with with just these shortcuts that, that Andrew showed, um, you, you could do it just about as quickly and more flexibly. In other words, you can have a grid value that's different from your nudge value and you, or, or change in it's simply a matter of a few, a few clicks. There's a couple other things, since we're in the topic of, of nudging, and Anders, let's just stay on your computer, but if you, mm -hmm. could go, if you could go to the edit window, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. The normal edit window. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so you'll see here right by the main counter, um, you've got my grid and my nudge settings in, in their own little cluster. And... Normally, it, it, and, and Anders, if you could go into grid mm -hmm. um, and just hold it right there. So at the bottom of that menu, you've got the scales. They can be bars and beats, minutes and seconds, time code, feet and frames, samples, or clips and markers. Um, and you've got one other one down at the bottom, which Anders has checked, and I often do too, because it opens up just a really nice flexibility. So right now, if you take a look at his grid, it's a quarter note, which is 
part of the bars and beats scale. Okay, now bars and beats is his main time counter scale, right? Now, if Anders was to change his main time uh, uh, counter scale to time code, now you can see that his grid's scale has changed to time code and the last value that he used when he was working in time code. So, yes, we give up a little bit of convenience on, on the music side by, by, by not having the ability to link the, uh, the grid and the nudge value. And it would be great if we could. I'm not saying we, we can't. But if you're working in post and music together, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, it can be a little confusing uh, to have your grids and all that change when you change your main time scale. But once you get used to the behavior, you'll leave it on all the time. Yeah. And the nudge has a similar thing. So if you go to the nudge menu, same thing. You could have your nudge time scale change along with your main time scale. So in other words, right now he's got a quarter note bars and beats because his main time scale is if he goes and changes his main time scale to, to time code. Oh, sorry. <laughs> more feet and frames. Yeah. Um, so time code, now it's changed his nudge value in addition to the grid value to his last used time code nudge value and and uh, understanding that's not what the question that was posted is it's worth knowing and, and worth kind of experimenting with and getting comfortable with if you can yeah so uh, by the way the same shortcuts that i mentioned to to change your grid values and your nudge values of course always also apply in this window and one other thing that is really important to note here is uh that these two editors do not share the same grid and nudge values. And what I mean by that, so let me set the grid here to be, I'll be bars and beats, and I'll, let me set the grid here for half note and the nudge value to 16th. So this will be the values that I'm looking at in the edit window. But when I switch over to the MIDI editor, I'm actually looking at two different values. And right now, I, I let me set this to quarter note and quarter note. And just going back to the edit window, you can see that it's retaining the settings that I used last in that window. And I love this, uh, that, you, that you can have two different grids, two different nudges in different, uh, in different windows. Anders, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Your MIDI editor looks a little bit different to mine. Okay, so In I'm working on, I think you're working on a, on a larger screen. I'm working on a 16-inch MacBook. I can only see uh, one, the, the, the grid values um, referenced. I don't see a separate nudge. I have to drop down um, from the grid menu to be able to switch between grid and nudge. Yeah, uh, that happens when your screen is... It's too small. <laughs> so if I make my edit window a little bit smaller, you can see that that happens to me as well. Right now, I don't have a nudge selector anymore. But next to the grid, there is a tiny little drop down where you can change to view your nudge value instead. And of course, if you can't see this nudge, I can imagine that you think that you can't change the nudge values in the mm -hmm. in the MIDI editor. Yep. So, so, um, so Tokyo, buy a bigger screen. <laughs> and, and me, by the sounds of it as well. <laughs> uh, okay, so that deals with being able to see the grid resolution and being able mm -hmm. to see what the nudge values are. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we can't link them so that they always link. We can link mm -hmm. the time scale, but we can't link the specific uh, subdivision that things will uh, well, things will nudge by. Uh, how do we nudge? Oh, um, a and great what question can we there. nudge? Uh, how we can nudge? Uh, there is a couple of ways to nudge uh, on on uh, uh, on the computer. So I'm just selecting one uh, note here, or one MIDI event, and um, on the numeric keypad, you've got the plus and minus to nudge by the nudge value, and if you're on a, uh, a laptop, you might not ev even have the numeric keypad. So how can you nudge then in, in that case, Andy? Uh, so I don't recommend it, first of all. Let me, let me 
let me go and and on record and say that if you're going to do serious editing the numeric keypad gives you things that you no, or normally wouldn't have and we'll go into that in just a second mm. but if you don't have a numeric keypad then the period key and the comma key which uh, if you look above them there the the greater than or less than signs will mm. will nudge um but if you have the numeric keypad um you have the plus and minus keys in the numeric keypad i highly recommend it and here's part of the reason why is mm -hmm. because you can use modifier keys for clips or midi notes so yep. for example anders um go ahead and hold the option key mm -hmm. and hit the plus or minus key on the, the numeric keypad what he's doing is he's nudging only the beginning of a note okay if he holds down the command key he's going to nudge only the end of the note. Let, let's be surgical. Let's call them what they are. These are the note on and note off events. <coughs> That's correct. Mm. That's correct. Um, you're 100% you're uh, so, right, 0% wrong. And these only work with the plus with the and minus keypad. on the numeric keypad. They That's will right. not work with the, the, the comma and, and period. And, what about, and, the, and what, what about the plus and minus keys uh, on the numeric strip at the top? Oh, it won't work don't work yeah no. it's it's only you only have this ability and by the way i don't use i, I do this with midi notes every once in a while um yeah. enough that it's useful to have but, but i do this with clips all the time yeah um nudging the, the beginning and nudging the end of a clip same shortcuts will do the same thing I do it all the time and mm. and you know you you can you'll have to pry my numeric keypad out of my cold <laughs> dead hand yeah um i i i, I if if I go to a site and they don't have a numeric keypad, the, that night I'm going to go to somewhere, some computer store, and buy a numeric keypad computer, because um, yeah. because it's you know when this is a huge time saver and and it's so surgical that you know you're, you're nudging and you can see here he's even nudging the fade ins. Mm. So for MIDI notes, for uh, for 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 clips, all that stuff is super super useful. Yes, you mm -hmm. can use the 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 period and the comma, but you know. Yeah. Uh, break yourself of that limitation as soon as you can get away with it so this is cool totally. so so anders is showing being able to extend and uh, and retract the length of notes and mm -hmm. also the trim on the clip as well and that's using the option key right option will do the start of the clip or the note on information mm -hmm. um holding down command mm -hmm. will uh do the end of a clip the end. or the note off information of a midi mm -hmm. note very yep. very cool um so we can nudge the the beginning and ends of notes we can note we can nudge the notes themselves we can nudge the beginnings of ends of clips boundaries um we can nudge the clips themselves so we're dealing with clips and events right now is mm -hmm. is that any kind of event so breakpoints yes. automation breakpoints for example mm -hmm. selections yes hold down sure. the shift key and it will nudge selections without nudging the contents of the selections like so awesome source and now a cool one uh, and i can never remember this one andy so you'll have to remind me yes, um, and i'll one. give you i'll give you a memorization tool on it as well being able to nudge the the content of the clip without yep. moving the clip boundaries okay so so anders anders is showing it right off the bat so he's, he's stealing my thunder so what's <laughs> happening is the clip stays where it is but the audio file that it's referencing is is being nudged okay and we're nudging the contents of the clip c o n t e n t s hold down the control key c o n t r o l so they both start with c o n t contents control awesome now we're nudging it in slip mode right now uh, if we were working in grid mode, do the, do the grid modes matter? No difference. Relative grid modes, nope. more, more specifically. Nope. No. Nope. It doesn't. Uh, all, um, and this is this is one huge advantage of nudging is that it operates exactly the same regardless mm. of whatever edit mode you're in. Okay. Well, let, let me expand my question a little bit because uh, Anders is working on a grid right now. It looks like. Am I wrong or? Uh, my morning eyes just not noticing um if you were if you're on the grid so you're on bar four specifically if you move back a whole bar uh your nudge value is set to a whole bar you'll move uh, uh back to bar three right okay but so, if you are yeah. slightly off of the grid and you have 
uh, that your nudge value set to a whole bar. Are you going to move a whole bar's worth? A whole bar's worth. In the same so way will... that relative grid mode works. Yep. Yeah. That's the, the whole idea of nudging it. It's always a fixed value. and doesn't matter where you start. Mm. It will always move on this fixed value. You're never nudging to, you're always nudging by. Excellent. Perfect. Great it's stuff. It's a great question, by the way. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I think we've shown nudging. There's a lot to it. Yeah. It's never a simple thing. Um, so Totally. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's kind of a shame. I think his question specifically was he wanted to have them intrinsically linked all the time. So if you change the, the grid resolution for editing, the nudge value would also change. Okay, uh, that's I, such a great idea. I'm going I, to I'm going to pass that on. Because mm. uh, I yeah, wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing that be a feature. I don't think that's the question. I think his problem, Tokyo's problem, is he, he's working on a MacBook, and his screen is too small, and he can't figure out how to change the nudge at all. This is the he this only is the thing with grid. questions, isn't it? They yeah, can yes. always be in, depending on how they're worded. They can be interpreted slightly different ways but i think we've covered a multitude of different uh different angles and yeah. the shortcuts that andrew showed the to change your grid value and to change your your nudge value those are worth their weight in gold if, if you're going to use your grid modes and you're going to use nudging they're worth knowing and keeping front of mind i use these quite a lot every day yeah i mean you can always go up there and click the menu it's not the end of the world mm -hmm. but you know the whole idea behind shortcuts is to save you time indeed so loads to do with nudging and hopefully that helped some if not all of you uh, understand how to nudge in Pro Tools and how powerful it can be uh, if you got a lot out of this episode it would be great if you could hit the uh, the thumbs up that really gives us a, a nice boost and subscribe to our channel as well this all helps the YouTube algorithm uh, find other Pro Tools users uh, to share our content to and if you fancy learning a little bit more about us you can head over to ProToolsAnswers.com you can subscribe over there and Andy will write to you once a month to let you know what we've been up to and if you fancy uh, supporting the show uh, we do all of this for free and we are uh, we're community funded so if you fancy getting involved uh, you can join our inner circle over at protoolsanswers.com a couple of tiers to, uh, to consider um, and you can get access to our closed discord community access to, to monthly master classes etc um, etc et and you can find out about more more about that over at protoolsanswers.com um, until the next episode thank you very much Anders thank you Dave thank you to Andy you bet and thank you to you guys, and we will see you on the next one. My name's Dave, this is Pro Tools Answers, and we're out.